today on our 2016 Ram 1500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the custom underbed installation kit for B&W Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches. This 5th Wheel installation kit is designed to let you install your B&W Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches. The underbed design of this kit allows for full truck bed access when you're ready. It's under 5 minutes to convert your empty truck bed into a 5th wheel hitch. We'll start by unlocking our B&W hitch and installing our 5th wheel adapter. We have ours pre-assembled, but you can adjust the uprights here depending on your truck and trailer combination. At this point, the hitch is ready to attach to the trailer. There's a little clip here that you can release. Basically, it's a safety pin. Then you can swing the handle out and you can watch the jaws open. You're ready to back into your trailer now. Once you're secure under the trailer, you can reinstall the clip. Since the fifth wheel installation kit doubles as a gooseneck hitch, when you're not towing your fifth wheel, you can remove it, turn it over, and we can store it upside down in the hitch. That way we'll have full bed access. Now here's what the underbed kit is going to look like installed. All of the components are going to be down here as opposed to up top in your bed. That's gonna help free up all that space up top. And all that extra space is really gonna come in handy when you're not using your hitch. So whether you're throwing in some construction supplies, loading up a few motorcycles, or even just have your luggage for your family vacation, you're not gonna have to worry about losing your bed space. Now one of the things that's kind of different and something I kind of like about this is that we're actually going to use a key for this in-bed latching mechanism. And this is actually going to turn and that's what's going to pull our pin in and out instead of your traditional handle that's over in the wheel well. So this is really easy to get to and really easy to use. So whenever you're ready to use it, simply put your key in, turn it, and then you can just drop your ball into place. Turn it back and that'll lock it. And whenever you're done, you can unlock it and you can actually flip the ball over put it in the hitch, lock it in place, and that's actually how you can store your ball. You're not gonna have to worry about it rolling around in the back seat of your truck or worry about keeping it in your glove box or something like that. Now our safety chain loops are going to be spring-loaded. That way when we're not using them, they're gonna sit flush and they're not gonna rattle around. Now these are also going to come up high enough and be large enough to use just about any size hook that you might have. Now the hitch is going to have a 30,000 pound maximum gross trailer weight rating. So that's going to be the amount of weight pulling on our hitch. So that's the weight of your trailer plus anything you might have on it. As far as the vertical load limit goes, that's going to be 7,500 pounds. It's going to be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. But something I do want to point out, it's always a good idea to check with your owner's manual to make sure your truck can pull that amount of weight. Now the ball itself is going to be two and five sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Now other than those few features we just talked about, there's going to be one other thing that kind of separates a B&W from many of the other hitches. And that's going to be the quality of construction. Now, I've had quite a bit of experience with gooseneck and fifth wheel hitches, and I can tell you right now, the B&W does have an advantage. They typically fit much, much better. Like they were designed specifically for your truck the quality of the brackets is much better, the finish, even down to the hardware. So in my opinion, that's going to be the biggest difference that separates the B&W from many of the others. To begin our installation, I went ahead and removed our spare tire. Now you don't have to do this, but it will help. Now what we can do is get in the bed and take some measurements. The measurement that we're taking is going to be to find the area that we need to drill a hole for our hitch. Now there is some measurements in the instructions, that gives you the lengths that you need to follow. But where we're going to measure from is from the end of our bed. And it's very important that you measure from the bed itself and not the tailgate. And that'll find the length. And then to find the center of the bed, what you can do is measure from wheel well to wheel well, split the difference, and make your mark. And that'll be the spot that we need to drill. Then another measurement you're gonna need to take is for the smaller three quarter inch hole. So I went ahead and measured from the bed and the measurement and the instructions from the center of our larger hole to find where our smaller hole is going to be. 
Now once we have those measurements down, what we can do is open up our larger hole. So I'm first going to use a small bit and drill a pilot hole. Once our pilot hole is made, we can then use a hole saw to make that large hole. Now I'm just going to use a hand file and kind of go around the opening that we made to remove any burrs. Now we can vacuum up all of our metal shavings. Now since we do have some bare metal along the edge of our hole, I'm just going to use some clear spray paint and paint it to help protect it from any rust. Now I'll repeat that same process for our smaller hole. So I'll drill it out, file the burrs down, vacuum everything up, and then put on some spray paint to protect that bare metal. Now we can come to our rear wheel wells and remove the liner. That's gonna be held in place with multiple eight millimeter screws. So we're gonna have a handful of them running along the edge of our wheel well. And we're going to have two here on the inside. Once all of the screws are removed, you can come to one of the edges and kind of just carefully kind of peel that liner back. And once we free it, we'll go ahead and set it off to the side. And then we're going to repeat this same process over on the other side. Now if we come over here to the driver's side, we're going to have some wiring that runs along the top of our frame and it also cuts over to the other side underneath the bed. Now we're going to have to unclip it from the frame. That way we can make room for our hitch. So it makes it really easy if you have a trim panel removal tool or a flathead screwdriver will work too. But just get underneath those clips, kind of pry them out of the frame. We're going to have a couple here on the outside and get those free and then move underneath the truck to get the rest of them. Underneath the truck, here's the wiring that runs across and that's where we're going to have to unclip it. So there'll be a handful of clips along the way that will pop off. Now once that is free, we're also going to have this vent tube coming from our rear axle that we need to take off as well. Now the vent tube clips are kind of tricky to see, so you'll kind of have to go by feel. But there's going to be a couple clips, and you'll just grab them. Kind of work them around until we get them to come free. It's going to be another clip on the vent tube. Kind of up here on the frame rail, it's a little tricky to get to, but it's the same style. It'll just kind of pull it off. Once we have the vent tube free, what we're going to do is kind of pull it and just let it hang down for now. Now we have our rear cross member. Now before we put that in, what we're going to do is clean out all the threaded holes. Because sometimes from the powder coating can get into the threads and make it a little difficult to thread our bolts in, especially when it's up above our head and we're trying to hold everything in place. So what I like to do before we even put it in is clean these holes out. So I'll use a little lubricant, take one of the bolts, and just make sure it threads in there nice and easily. And I'm gonna do that for all of the holes in this cross member. Now that we have all of our threaded holes cleaned out, we can go ahead and put this in place. Now this is the rear brace, and the way we're going to do this is come over to the passenger side of the truck, and one side will be notched like this. We're gonna want this to face the driver's side of the truck, and we're going to want this notch to face towards the back of the truck. 
So we're gonna put it in this opening here in between our spring and this bed mount. And slide it all the way across until it rests on the other side of the frame. Just like that. So now we can take our brace and slide it towards the back of the truck. And it's actually gonna rest on top of this cross member here. And what this notch is for, this notch is there to allow the wiring to run through that. That way it doesn't get pinched or anything like that. Let's take it and push it towards the back of the truck. And once we get close, what you can do is rotate that up. Once you have it flipped up, what you're going to want to do is make sure that that wire going through that cutout in our bar isn't pinched or hung up or anything like that. Now we can put in our center section, but there is something I do want to point out before we put it up is that you'll notice that the area where we actually put our ball, that is offset. So it's sitting closer to one side. Well, the side here that it's sitting closest to, and I went ahead and marked it, this is going to face towards the front of the truck. So how we're gonna get our center section in place is we're actually gonna come up kind of through this opening and flip it up flat and then we'll be able to slide it back and that way we'll be able to clear our exhaust and the exhaust will actually kind of support it a little bit. Once we have it up there, we can push it all the way back. We're gonna try and get the hole in the hitch as close as we can to the hole in the bed that we made. Since it's a little tight, you may need an extra set of hands to make it a little easier, but it can be done by yourself. Now what we can do is go up inside of the bed, make sure everything's lined up, and then we're actually going to support the center section. So now here in the bed of the truck, went ahead and made sure that our hitch lines up with the hole in the bed of the truck that we made. And what I'm gonna do is use this homemade apparatus to actually lift that hitch up and pull it flat against the bottom of our bed. That way it'll stay in place. It'll be a little easier to get everything bolted up. So what I did was just got two large blocks of wood and a two by four. And I just got a regular toe strap. I'm gonna put one hook in the hook here in our hitch. I'll pull some of the slack out, put it around the two by four. Take the other end of the hook, put it on that same bar on our hitch. Then we can just pull that slack out. And that'll actually hold that hitch up flat. Now we're gonna loosely install some hardware to connect the center section to the rear brace. Now the hardware that we're going to be using are the inch and a half bolts, followed by a split lock washer, and then a flat washer. We're gonna start in the very center, this middle hole. And once we have this hand tight, you're going to want to put in two more bolts using this same hardware pattern. Now the holes that we're going to put it on are the two furthest outside holes. So this one over here at this end of the center section, as well as this one over here on that end of the center section. So now we can put in our front cross member. Again, we're going to do that from the passenger side of the truck. Now the cross member, one side is going to have holes in it. We're going to want to make sure that these holes or are facing towards the back of the truck. And so how this is gonna work is we're gonna slide it in like this, in this V shape. And once we have it on both frame rails, what we're gonna do is flip it up like this. That way this flat side with the holes in it will sit against the other side of our center section. 
Now to get this in, what we're going to do is actually come here in front of the rear tire and this opening here underneath the frame rail. We got to kind of angle it up like so. We can just keep pushing it towards the driver's side of the truck until we can push it up all the way. And we'll scooch it back a little bit. That way it's resting on both sides of the frame rail. Now something I do want to point out over here on the driver's side, we are going to have our wiring running through here. So you want to make sure that the angle our cross section is going to get over it or sit in front of it rather. That way when we flip it up and flat, it's not going to pinch our wiring. So more or less just pay attention where your wiring's sitting and when you flip this over, come back, check it, make sure our wires aren't pinched. So with our angle in place, we can then flip it and rotate it up. That way the holes in it will line up with the holes in our center section. Now we're going to install hardware, hand tight, and these two holes, so the two center holes. Now what I'm going to do is take the longer bolt, and with the head of the bolt facing the back of the truck, we're going to slide that through. Then over on the other side, we'll go ahead and finish everything off with a flat washer, a split lock washer, and a hex nut. If you try to put our bolt into this hole, we're not gonna have enough room because of this bracket here. So what you can do is either go in the bed and use your tool uh, that's included to slide this over, or it's not too difficult just to do by hand which I'm gonna do. So I'll just kind of get the bolt somewhat close, slide that over, then I'm able to push my bolt completely through. Then I'll go back on the other side and use the same hardware that we did on this side. Flat washer, lock washer, and a nut. Now that everything is supporting itself, you can go up inside the bed and disconnect your strap that was holding our center section up flat against the bed. Now we can move on to our side plates. We're gonna be over here on the passenger side first. What we're gonna do is take one of the U-bolts and this is going to slide around the frame. But it's going to go in this pocket here where our spring rests. So you wanna make sure that as close as you can to the plate, just slide that U-bolt over the frame like that. Now we're going to grab our passenger side inside plate. Now the way this is gonna work, this flat side here with these two holes, it's going to sit like this against the inside of our frame rail and that U-bolt is actually going to go through these two holes and then we can secure it on the other side. Now these two holes, these are actually going to line up with our center section as well as our cross brace that runs across. and push our U-bolt through it. Then we can loosely secure it using a split lock washer and a nut. Now use that same hardware combination on the top of our U-bolt. Now we're going to loosely install our hardware up here in these top two holes. Now for this hole closest to the center of the truck, what we're going to do is take a longer bolt and a flat washer. We're going to run that through. And for this hole closest to the outside of the truck, we're just going to take a plain shorter bolt and push that through. Then we go to the other side and use the rest of the hardware to secure it. Now each one of our bolts it's going to get a flat washer, a split lock washer, and a nut. Get that loosely 
installed. Now I went ahead and just slid my U-bolt over the frame here on the driver's side, just how I did on the passenger side. Now the side plates, the inside side plates over here are going to be just a little bit different than they were on the passenger side. So I'll explain those to you in the open so we can take a good look at them. Something I do want to point out is these brake lines here, just keep a good visual of these because our side plate is going to accommodate these and kind of fit around them. So it'll just make a little more sense when I'm explaining how the side plate works. So here's our plates. Now there's going to be two plates. The way these are going to work is this plate here that is notched like so, that's going to sit against the inside of the frame rail. This side is. So if this is outside of the truck, it's going to be pointing towards the center of the truck. And those brake lines that I mentioned, what we're going to do is run those through here. So once we get it up there, we'll kind of have to fish it around and get it to sit flat against the frame. Once the brake lines are in this opening, we're going to take this plate. Then this plate is actually just going to sit right on top of it like so. And then these holes, that's where our U-bolt will come through on this side. So let me go ahead and put our plates in position. I'm gonna work it over them brake lines. Once we have it over the brake lines, we'll grab that other plate. And that'll go underneath the brake lines, or behind them rather. We can get our U-bolt lined up and get it pushed through. And we're going to secure it using a split lock washer and a nut on both ends. Now we can secure the two plates together with these two holes. We're going to take an inch and a half bolt, run one of those through each hole. And on the other side, we'll take a split lock washer and a nut. Now we can put the hardware in our side plate to attach it to our center section. And it's going to be the same setup as the other side. We're going to take a long bolt and a flat washer for this hole closest to the center of the truck run that through and then for the hole close to the outside of the truck we're going to take one of the shorter bolts and just run that through by itself and I went ahead and secured the end of those bolts hand tight using that same hardware combination that we used over on the other side now we can install our rear support brace now if you come right here we are gonna to have to put some hardware in. We're gonna be putting a bolt in this hole here. So what they give us is this bolt and it has a little handle welded onto it. So what we're gonna do is kinda of push this bolt in through there and get it to drop down. What that handle's for, not only to help us get it in place, but whenever we tighten it down, it's actually going to act as a stop too. That way the bolt just doesn't free spin and we can never get the nut tightened up. So we have one on this side and we're also going to be dropping one in this hole. Our truck has dual exhaust and this tailpipe is actually kind of going to be an inconvenience. It's going to be in the way and make doing everything a lot more difficult. So we're just going to lower it. Now it's going to be held in place with two rubber isolator hangers. And I went ahead and sprayed them both down with some penetrating oil to help pop them off. Then we'll just take a pry bar and kind of work that rubber hanger off of our exhaust. There's one more hanger right here. We'll go ahead and do that same thing to get it off. Now 
now we should have enough room to kind of pull down on our tailpipe and make it a lot easier to work. So now we'll take our rear brace and slide that into position. Open it up and get our handle bolts to drop through. And while we're holding it up, we're gonna take one of these flange nuts and get that started on each side. That way this rear brace will support itself while we work on the rest of the hardware. Now if we move to the other side of our rear bracket, we're gonna have two more holes that we need to put hardware in. We're gonna use a bolt, a split lock washer, and a flat washer. You just get those started on each side. Now we're able to tighten down all of our hardware. And we are gonna to have to do this in a specific order. The hardware that we're gonna start with first are these two nuts here on our rear brace. Now we can tighten the two bolts that connect our rear brace to our center section. Now we're gonna tighten up the remaining bolts here on our rear cross member. Now we're gonna tighten down these two center bolts here on our front cross member. Now we can come over to our U-bolts and tighten those down. Now what we're gonna do with these is tighten down each nut a little bit at a time. That way we can draw that U-bolt through evenly. So we want about the same amount of thread sticking out of the nut on both top and bottom. Now on the driver's side plate, come over here and tighten these two bolts down that hold the two plates together. And our side plates, now we can tighten down the two bolts that are attaching it to our front cross rail. Now we can use a torque wrench to torque all of our hardware to the specification found in our instructions. Now you're going to want to use that same tightening sequence for our torquing that we used earlier. Now once everything is torqued down, we can install our safety chain loops. So from underneath the truck, we're going to have two holes in our center section. And there'll be two of these holes on each side. And so we're just going to drill using our center section as a template through the truck bed. That way we can go up top and drop our safety chain hooks into place. We'll just repeat that same process on the other side. Now up here in the bed, I went ahead and filed all the burrs off of the holes that we drilled. I used a vacuum to suck up all the metal shavings. And then before I drop my hooks down, I'll use some clear spray paint again, just to help protect that bare metal. What you can do is take your hooks, just drop them into place. We can go on the bottom side of the truck and get them secured. This is where our safety chain hooks drop through. Now what we're going to do on each one is take a spring. We push it up over it. We're going to take one of the nuts, get it started. We'll do that to each one. Once we have them both hand tight, we're going to tighten the nuts down until the bottom of the nut is flush with the bottom of the bolt. 
I went ahead and just secured my wiring to this factory line here with a few zip ties just to keep it up and out of the way. And I also secured my vent tube. What I did with this is I just ran it up and over the gas tank, used a couple zip ties to hold it in place, and ran the end of it out to the other side. Now we can go ahead and rehang our exhaust the opposite way that we lowered it. And finally, we can go ahead and reinstall our wheel well liners. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the B&W Custom Underbed Installation Kit for companion fifth wheel trailer hitches on our 2016 Ram 1500.